Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in. This is going to be real quick. You guys know that we're in the middle of a fundraiser. You know that there's so much work going on through the Odyssey Project, Black Man Lead, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, uh, Intimate Partner, uh, Violence Support, uh, uh, what else? Mental Health, uh, Wraparound Services, Dealing with the Teenage Suicide Rate. Uh, dealing with the racial wealth gap, gentrification, and car mass incarceration, so many things that we've done over the past 30 years. Uh, you followed me, you know what's going on, but it's something I just really have to share with you right here. Uh, I am a fan of a hip-hop artist, a rapper by the name of D1 out of New Orleans. I've been following him for a while now, uh, and the cat spits some real stuff Um and one of the things he was talking about, he shared, was the lyrics to a song called People Don't Want That Real. I'm just going to share something with you because it has so much impact on how our children are being stolen from us. Uh, this one said, the, uh, the lyrics that I'm going to share, here, here they are. It says, people don't want that real. They just say they do. People don't want that real. And I'm one of them too. I'm so easily entertained by ratchet activity. Violent negative imagery always seemed to interest me. I tell myself no more music glorifying evil, selling drugs, womanizing, killing our people. Then I hear a song with a tight beat and I can't deny it. The hook is catchy so I subconsciously memorize it. Next thing you know I'm reciting all the lyrics and my day don't feel complete unless I hear it. Inviting darkness in my spirit. This can't be light. I'm craving what I'm supposed to be fighting. This can't be right. I must be blind to the effects. This can't be sight. Death is in the power of the tongue. This can't be life. Be careful of what you get involved with because you can't support the cause and then hate the effect it causes. I've been teaching propaganda for more than 20 years. I've been sharing to you how they are programming us, how they are sending subliminal messages, how they are literally... Uh, undermining our desires and our efforts to properly align and socialize our youth. I've been talking about this. We are going to have to address this on a massive scale. This is a propagandized message. You can sit up and say it's entertainment all you want. I'm telling you scientifically, this is how masses are controlled. We aren't the only mass being controlled. Everybody's getting bombarded with messages that gives them the insight that everything that they're doing in their particular spectrum is okay, but the, the wealthy elite are the ones pulling the strings. We are the one at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. So everybody's standing on us dealing with whatever they're dealing with and living whatever they're living. And it's our responsibility to change that. That's why I created Black Men Lead. That's why I work so heavily with our young women and our young girls because of the things that go through, the things we don't like to talk about. The childhood sexual abuse, the, uh, the incest, the domestic violence. We don't want to talk about the same things with our young black men as if it doesn't happen to them. We don't want to talk about the miseducation and the disproportionality in which our young black males are being uh, referred to special education uh, assessments for the purpose of more money because they get double the money if they get uh, certified but also they're keeping them drugged with psychotropic drugs for ADHD and oppositional divine disorder uh, psychotropic drugs such as Adderall, Vyvanse, Concerta, Ritalin and you can move on down the line these schedule two drugs are highly addictive and serve no other purpose than to make these kids docile uh, make them let um, uh, un unpurposed uh, full of lethargy and basically over time they just zone out and they drop out what happens when they drop out they're five times more likely to what become incarcerated once they become incarcerated they become institutionalized into an in, uh, the very things that will ensure they re recidivate and come back 72 percent to 75 percent of them will recidivate within the first three years of being released cycle in cycle out it's our job to stop that i've been working i've been uh, I've talked about the 80,000 hours of research, but I don't just t research to talk. I research to create solutions. The Blueprint 1.0, the Black Men Lead Passage, the work doing in the, uh, in the community, connecting with people like Dr. Michael Blanchard, uh, Brother uh, Michael Jordan, uh, filmmaker Tony Lindsay. And I can go on about people who are actually doing things. I've been inside schools. I've been to school districts. I am c constantly in juvenile court. 
advocating for our youth who are being sucked up in that system. The one thing that blows my mind about juvenile court is when I get there, I see us in full effect. I see uh, Hispanics, Latinos, a couple of Middle Eastern Arabs, not many. Guess who I don't see? I don't see whites. You want to you wanna, uh, go out on a limb and say white kids don't uh, break laws, white kids aren't delinquent, white kids, oh man, they popping pills, they shoplifting, they do a bunch of other things. But their parents' money cover them. They're in a system that is there to protect them. They're there. This system is literally going to slide them to the side, call their mom, hey, you need to come get them. They're going to literally put you, your kid in the system. I went to a school to check on one of my grandkids, and I saw a five-year-old black boy in handcuffs. And I immediately said, why is he in handcuffs? Take it off. You are literally conditioning him. To have a criminal mindset you're putting cuffs on him for what what could he possibly be doing that he needs cuffs put him in a room by himself if he's actually hostile do not cuff him but that is a part of the mental processing that our kids are facing that we are not protecting them for them. look there's no way we're going to confront all this at once but we've got to keep moving the reason I ask for your support is because we need to go national with the Black Man lead. Why? We need a universal uh, definition of what manhood, Black manhood is. We need a universal model. We need to be able to go to wherever city we at and know what we're expecting from the men in that city. And that starts with building strong Black boys, but it also uh, continues with healing young Black men. And that's what we need to do just in that area alone. We also need to work on shoring up and restoring the black family because without the black family, we are absent of the institution through which we literally inculcate the values, interests, and principles into the mindsets and psyches of our young children so that they know what they're supposed to grow up and do before they get there. I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to bore you, but I do want to implore you. Look in the description box. Give. We need your support more than ever. Now, more than ever in the past, is a time to support inner, community, inner city community initiatives. Whatever you do, it's time to stop looking from the outside. It's time to stop sitting on the sideline. It's time to su stop sitting thinking somebody else is going to do it. We need your support. I've been in the game for a long time. I've been... <laughs> Uh, almost anything you can imagine I've been through it I've been there and I'm still fighting and I'm still pushing and I'm going to keep doing it but I'm asking for your support on that note look I'm going to get ready to get out of here I got some things I need to get to but I had to share this with you to me that was a very powerful representation by D1 of what's going on and how we're losing so many of our youth and we're not fighting hard enough to push back against that we're not fighting hard enough to protect their minds from everything that's bombarding it this is why you're getting a spike in teenage suicides especially among young girls uh ages 5 to 13 which is crazy to me but also young black males ages 14 to 24 we've got work to do this is my challenge to do don't sit on this don't push it to the side don't pass it on to anybody else show some love let's make some things happen i'm pushing if you've got something you want addressed put it in the uh um Put it in the uh, comment field. If you've got somebody you know need help, put it in the comment field. Um, if you got something you want addressed in the sense of let's talk about this, put it in the comment field. Click the like button. Click the share button. But whatever you do, don't leave this video without giving. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.